Hello again, this is Hound Dog, flying with you in another historical aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. Today we are flying in the Navy's multi-role carrier based strike fighter, the McDonnell Douglas F&A-18 Hornet. Radio check, 123-321, radio check. By the 1960s, U.S. jet fighters had become larger, heavier, less maneuverable, more complicated and difficult to maintain, while also becoming more expensive to procure and operate. On 6 January 1972, under growing pressure from Congress, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for proposal through their LWF Lightweight Fighter Program for a simple, cheap, fast, agile air superiority fighter with a limited secondary ground attack capability. At the same time, the Navy's VFAX program was attempting to procure a new multi-role aircraft to replace the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk, the LTV A-7 Corsair II, and the remaining McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom IIs. On 13 April 1972, the Air Force selected the General Dynamics YF-16 and Northrop YF-17 for a competitive fly-off of prototypes. The YF-17 design had evolved from Northrop's earlier P-530 Cobra program intended to enhance the inexpensive and lightweight F-5 Freedom Fighter, sometimes referred to as the Air Inferiority Fighter. The new YF-17 retained the extremely long leading edge wing root extensions, sometimes called lurks, that gave the aircraft a hooded look like a cobra snake. In August 1973, Congress separately issued the Navy a mandate to pursue a lower cost alternative to the F-14 fighter, and the Secretary of Defense ordered the Navy to evaluate the two competitors of the Air Force lightweight fighter program. On 13 January 1975, the Air Force selected the General Dynamics YF-16 over the Northrop YF-17 by a small margin. Four months later, in May 1975, the Navy selected the twin-engine YF-17, claiming the YF-16 single-engine and narrow landing gear made it unsuitable for carrier operations. Northrop partnered with McDonnell Douglas to capitalize on the latter's experience in building carrier aircraft, with each company producing various components of the aircraft and McDonnell Douglas performing final assembly. McDonnell Douglas was the prime contractor for the carrier-based version, and Northrop was the prime contractor for the F-18L land-based version, which Northrop hoped to sell to other countries. The new F-18 Hornet design closely resembled the Northrop's YF-17's physical appearance, but was significantly modified to meet the Navy's multi-role fighter attack aircraft specifications and to survive the demanding carrier operations. The specifications also required a long service life with high reliability and maintainability, but at a minimal cost. The Navy ordered 11 pre-production aircraft for evaluation, including nine single-seaters and two tandem-seaters. The pilot enters the cockpit from a built-in ladder that retracts into the left lurks and then straps into a Martin Baker ejection seat under a bubble canopy with an unrestricted 360-degree view. The leading edge of the shoulder-mounted wedge-shaped wings sweep back 20 degrees and merge with the long curved lurks forward extensions. The wing's straight trailing edge has large inboard flaps and outboard flapperons, with the outer wing panels hydraulically folding up 100 degrees. There is a large speed brake mounted between twin outboard slanted tail fins and independent all-flying horizontal tailorons control pitch and enhanced roll performance. Power comes from twin 16,000 pound thrust afterburning General Electric F404 low bypass turbofan jet engines with simple fixed D-shaped inlets and rear exhausts that are slightly pointed inward. The F-A-18 was the first production aircraft with quadruple redundant digital fly-by-wire flight control system and features three CRT multifunction display.
displays or MFDs, a heads-up display or HUD, and a hands-on throttle and stick or HOTAS control system. The dual hydraulic system operates the flight surfaces and the heavy-duty tricycle landing gear with the twin wheel nose gear retracting forward and the single wheel main gear rotating inward and to the rear. The stinger type arresting hook is attached aft between the engine exhaust. The F-18's original primary sensor was the huge APG-65 water-cooled radar with multiple modes for strike, air combat, and navigation. Defensive systems included a radar detection warning receiver chaff and flare dispensers, and an electronic deception jammer. The Hornet's armament consists of a single modular Vulcan 20mm six-barrel rotary cannon with a 560-round ammunition drum and set into the top of the nose with minimal vibration mounts. Muzzle gas is directed over the top of the lurks to prevent compressor stalls. The Hornet can carry up to 15,500 pounds of a wide range of stores on nine hardpoints, a missile launch reel on each wingtip, two pylons under each wing, a recessed hardpoint under each engine nacelle, and a single centerline pylon. The first production FA-18 flew on 18 November 1978. The Navy implemented their new principal side concept using Navy and Marine Corps test pilots instead of civilian test pilots to conduct all testing at the Naval Air Station Patuxent River. In March 1979, Lieutenant Commander John Padgett became the first Navy pilot to fly the F-A-18. Following trials and operational testing, production Hornets were introduced to the fleet replacement training squadrons at the Naval Air Station in Lamar, California. Hornet first entered operational service on 7 January 1983, replacing the Marine Corps' F-4s at the Marine Corps Air Station, El Toro, California. In March 1984, the Navy received their first Hornets to replace the A-7E Corsair IIs at NAS Lemoore, California. In February 1985, Navy Strike Fighter Squadrons VFA-25 and VFA-113 made the first F-18 carrier deployment aboard the USS Constellation. The initial fleet reports confirmed that the Navy and Marines were very happy with the Hornet. It handled nicely and was a rugged, reliable aircraft, easy and cheap to maintain and keep flying. Its lightweight fighter YF-17 Origins made it agile and superior to the F-16 in terms of turn radius and extreme angle of attack maneuvers, although inferior in terms of roll rate. In a series of tests against the F-14, the Hornet was able to consistently outmaneuver the big Tomcat. Unfortunately, the Hornet's range was below the specified requirements, and despite significant attempts and upgrades, has never really been fully corrected and remains the Hornet's most criticized deficiency. The F-A-18 has proven its effectiveness and survivability in many combat actions, beginning in March and April 1986 during a multi-service airstrike against Libyan SA-5 SAM radar sites. The Hornet also saw extensive combat in the 1991 Gulf War, in the Bosnia and Kosovo conflict, and during the 2003 war with Iraq. The F-A-18 clearly demonstrated its multi-role fighter attack mission capability when on several occasions Hornets successfully engaged or shot down enemy fighter aircraft before continuing to their original ground target to accurately deliver a full load of bombs. The F-18 has also established new records in combat aircraft reliability, maintainability, availability, and more importantly, survivability. The Hornet has also seen extensive service with numerous other countries, including Canada, Australia, Finland, Kuwait, Malaysia, Spain, and Switzerland. In 1986, the U.S. Navy's Blue Angel Flight Demonstration Squadron replaced the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk with the F-A-18 Hornet, which they still fly to this day. In 
In September 1987, Hornet production shifted to the updated and more formidable FA-18C, with the primary improvements including a more powerful radar and the ability to carry the AGM-65 Maverick and AGM-84 Harpoon air-to-surface missiles, as well as the new AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air AMRAM missile. On August 1997, the McDonnell Douglas Corporation merged with Boeing, and Hornet production for the U.S. Navy ended in 1999, with a total of 1,480 F&A-18 Legacy Hornets produced. For the past 35 years, the Hornet has been the backbone of the Navy and Marine Corps combat jet air power, but in April 2018, the Navy announced the retirement of their F-A-18Cs from combat roles. The Marines, however, have chosen to extend their use of reconditioned Legacy Hornets by 10,000 flight hours until the year 2030, primarily because of the Hornets' successful and reliable career, as well as delays in the F-35B Lightning program.